So bariatric surgery is not just about losing belly fat or losing fat from any part of the body. Bariatric surgery is actually a life transforming decision. Mm -hmm. you feel is, yeah. Yes, everything changes. So it is it is a it is sort of a turning point in the person's uh, life. You start eating healthy on on, a, on their own. You feel more energetic. You lose weight. You get rid of a number of diseases. You live longer. The social effects are enormous. Your acceptability at work and uh, in your social circles increases. Your self confidence increases. Your job prospects increase. Everything changes. Whether we like uh, to accept this or not, but this is a fact. Is there any age limit, doctor, to undergo this? Uh, the prescribed age limit is from 18 to 65 years, but these are not rigid limits. If somebody needs or ben will benefit from this surgery, you can do this surgery even in younger patients or even in older patients. The only requirement is that the person should be fit enough to undergo surgery. Okay. Uh, and uh, there is one question from Preksha Modi. Losing 8 to 10 kgs in a month without any exercise or diet, does it indicate hazardous disease? Absolutely. If you are losing weight without trying, it absolutely indicates that there is uh, something, there may be something seriously wrong. You should immediately consult a physician. Everyone, everyone would love to, you know, use or lose weight like this. <laughs> Eight to ten kg is not really need. Absolutely, but uh, <laughs> miracles don't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, there's a uh, one more question from Preksha Modi itself. Uh, she has asked, what's the best way to reduce weight without compromising in diet? See, as I said, everyone wants the easier way. <laughs> But unfortunately, there is no easy way to lose weight. And uh, diet and exercise are definitely not easy. And on top of that, they are not very effective. So if you are aiming at losing, say, maybe about 10% of your weight, diet and exercise are perfectly fine. It will give you a lot of benefit. I'm not saying that it won't give you benefit. Even 10% weight loss gives you a lot of benefits in terms of uh, improvement in overall fitness and in improvement in diseases associated with obesity, but sometimes that may not be enough. So the diet definitely has to be changed uh, if you want to lose weight. You have to cut down on the carbohydrates and you have to increase proteins. Fats may be kept the same. You may not have, you may not really cut down fats because they are now not thought to be that harmful. The total number of calories consumed in a day also has to be brought down. There is no shortcut to that. Uh, there is a question from summary. Does obesity leads high BP? Yes, definitely. Obesity leads to high BP. Uh, so, more people who are uh, overweight suffer from hypertension or high blood pressure than people who are not overweight. And when, once the weight starts to come down after uh, bariatric surgery or after other uh, methods of uh, weight loss, the blood pressure also starts to become uh, better, medicine requirement goes down. In a lot of people, you can actually stop medicines for blood pressure. So, uh, there is a question from Vishal Parmar. Should I, uh, should I consider myself having uh, a weight loss surgery? Like what he means to say is, uh, is well, this he, does he need, does he does need, he need weight loss? Very good question, very important question. The, the basic criteria for uh, considering weight loss surgery is a BMI of more than 37.5 uh, without any other uh, medical problems and or a BMI of more than 32.5 with any of the problems which are directly related to obesity like diabetes, like hypertension, like obstructive sleep apnea or snoring at night, uh, like knee joint pain, back pain and any other mechanical problems that we know are related to obesity. So if you have any of these problems and your BMI is more than 32.5, you will definitely, definitely benefit from surgery and you are a candidate for surgery. If you are, if you are more than 37.5, even if you don't have any of these diseases, it will be very, very helpful or very, very much beneficial to undergo this surgery because it will prevent a number of these diseases and it will improve your quality of life and ultimately it will increase your total lifespan by an estimated 5-10 years. 
Uh, Vishal has asked two more questions. One is, what are the pros and cons of various weight loss surgeries? What should my goal weight be? So your goal weight is, uh, again, uh, the BMI has to fall between 18.5 to 22.5. 20 is a round figure, small part figure that you can take. You have to calculate your BMI and uh, there are a number of apps available uh, on all mobile platforms. There are charts available online or you can just use a simple calculator and uh, calculate your uh, BMI. So if your BMI should fall between these two limits, that is your ideal or goal weight. Uh, depending on what, how much overweight you are and depending on what your uh, method of treatment is, your target weight for that particular treatment or method of weight loss will change. If you are going for diet and exercise, then your target weight loss should be around 5 to 10 percent over the next one year or so. Expecting more weight loss than this is usually unrealistic. It is seldom achieved and it will give rise to a lot of disappointment. If you need to lose more weight than this, I would suggest that you consult a weight loss surgeon and he may be able to evaluate you more completely and advise a better uh, method of uh, weight loss. What are the other questions, sir? Uh, what, what are the types of and what are the pros, pros and cons of uh, various types of bariatric surgeries? So, basically, broadly, there are two types of bariatric surgeries. One is called a sleep gastrectomy, the other is called a bypass. Uh, both of them give rise to approximately equal amount of weight loss. Bypass gives a little more weight loss than sleep. Uh, if there are diseases associated with obesity present in the person, a bypass would be a more preferred. Uh, Operation. It gives better resolution of diabetes, better resolution of high, high blood pressure, better resolution of high cholesterol. Uh, obstructive sleep apnea is probably one disease which is equally uh, benefited by both uh, these surgeries, either a sleep gastrectomy or a bypass. So these are the pros and cons of this surgery from the patient's point of view. From the doctor's point of view, uh, bypass is a little more difficult to perform and requires more time and expertise. So somebody who is experienced in both, for him both these surgeries are uh, basically equally easy to perform. Uh, Doctor, on an average, how many kgs can we reduce by undergoing weight loss surgery? Well, the, the number of kgs is something which is not fixed because it depends on the person's person. initial weight and the ideal weight. So we, are, we expect uh, our patients to lose at least 60 to 70 percent of their excess weight. Say for example, somebody is, somebody is the ideal weight is 100 kilos and he is 150 kilos and we lose surgery, then he should be, we should be expecting him to lose somewhere around 35 to 40 kilos. Some people lose more weight and some people lose a little less, but this is an average figure that I am stating. The minimum mm, weight loss that we accept as uh, as a surgery being successful is a 50% loss of excess body weight. Uh, here's a question from Aparna, question number 46. What's more important, the number of calories you eat or the type of calories you eat? Well, both are important. Uh, the type of calories is also important. You have to eat more proteins, less carbohydrates, fats are not that bad. But the total number of calories also have to be monitored and they have also be, uh, to be kept in check. So both are equally important. I don't think that you can uh, really substitute one for the other. Both have to go and handle them. Okay. Uh, Parna has asked two more questions. I go to bed early, but I am always too exhausted to work out. What should I do? See, first thing is that I know very little about your clinical condition. If you are uh, extremely overweight, uh, then you may be having diabetes. Uh, which may be causing all this lethargy and all these things. The other reason could be that if you are dieting heavily or if you are on a crash diet or something like that, it may be leading to the uh, lack of uh, energy or reduced uh, metabolism. So very difficult to actually pinpoint uh, the cause. Probably a weight loss surgeon or a physician 
may be able to guide you better once you see it. Okay. Uh, how do I always stop wanting a dessert after lunch and dinner? Yeah. That exactly, that actually may be pointing towards uh, craving for carbohydrates, which means that your body is uh, actually wanting to, wanting you to consume more carbohydrates because the set point of your body's weight may be higher than what you are, uh, what you are at. So, really you have to be evaluated in thoroughness and uh, then we can decide whether this is pathological or this is just... Uh, uh, Dr. What are the risks of weight loss surgery? Well, the biggest misconception is that weight loss surgery is a complicated, complex surgery and it is uh, associated with and it's risky. But there is nothing uh, farther from the truth. In, in good hands, in competent hands, weight loss surgery is very, very safe. In fact, it is almost as safe, it is as safe as say for example a gallbladder or a hernia surgery. The patient uh, goes home in 2-3 to three days and they are back to work in uh, week 10 days. So it's a very, very safe surgery. So after 10 days, they will leave a normal life? Absolutely. They will be walking on the day of the day. They will be made to walk, they will, be get up, they will get up from the bed and will be made to walk on the day of surgery itself. Okay. And when they go home from the hospital in 2 or 3 days, they will be walking. They will be able to take care of themselves. In, in a week 10 days, most of my patients are actually able to restart their full working schedule. Okay. Uh, what other problems can be relieved by weight loss surgery? Well, all the problems which are associated with uh, overweight and obesity are, uh, are, are, are actually improved by weight loss surgery. Diabetes disappears in a good 70-80% uh, people and a uh, lot of them, about 70-75% can actually stop all medicines for diabetes and their blood sugar will remain normal. The, uh, the rest of them will actually need less medicines. Blood pressure becomes easier to control, you need less medicines and your blood pressure remains better controlled. Uh, obstructive sleep apnea or snoring and choking actually begins to disappear very soon after surgery, even before significant weight loss has happened. Fatty liver improves. The long term solution to fatty liver is, is bariatric surgery is probably the only Current long term solution to fatty liver, no other uh, method of treatment actually improves fatty liver so much. The risk of cancer goes down gradually. Uh, the knee problems, the back problems actually improve, your fitness improves, everything improves. So, Doctor, when did this actually start this procedure, bariatric surgery? Yes. Well, bariatric surgery is not a new procedure. People have been uh, doing this for the past 50 to 60 years. Okay. Uh, the only problem at that time was that we did not have laparoscopic uh, equipment or expertise. So we had to do all these surgeries by cutting open the tongue. So there was a very high morbidity associated with this surgery people but uh, it was difficult to manage those people who are big and who have big cuts in their abdomen. Since the advent of laparoscopy it has become much easier and much uh, more comfortable for the patient. You have just three or four, five holes in your tummy, which are about, uh, two of them are about one, one and a half centimeters, and the rest of them are all about half a centimeter each. And the pain is very much less, the wound problems are very much less, there is no wound infection. The return to activity is so much better, and uh, all other problems associated with the uh, major surgery or a major cut in the abdomen are actually gone. So that's why it has become more popular and more widely available now in the past say 20 to 30 years. But it's not a new surgery at all. No. Okay. So we all had a misconception about uh, what is bariatric surgery and weight loss surgery. Even I used to think it's a new procedure actually. No, I never knew it's a 50 to 60 year old procedure. Yes, absolutely. Another, another big misconception that people have is that weight loss surgery is just removal of fat from the body. Well, that is... There is always a con confusion between liposuction and a surgery. Absolutely. 
So liposuction is actually removal of the fat from under the skin of a specific part of the body. So liposuction is not used for weight reduction. Liposuction is used for body shaping or body contouring. If you don't like the way a part of your body is because of the excess fat under the skin, you can get that skin that get that fat removed by liposuction to give it a better or more pleasing shape. But for overall weight loss from the whole body in a healthier and natural way, bariatric surgery is actually the only procedure that works. Okay. So we have uh, come to the end of the show and done with all the questions. So I would like you, uh, like you to tell something uh, which we have not covered actually in this uh, show. Well, the topic I think which we have left out I the questions or answers which uh, you would like to address to our uh, viewers. Well, I think most of what uh, is is required to be known, I, we have spoken about, I would just like to recap uh, everything in brief. So the first and most important thing that we have to remember is that obesity or overweight is a disease, it is not a lifestyle problem. Therefore, it is not the fault of the person who is obese or overweight. It, 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 is, it is not in his hands. It's because his set point of the weight is high, that is why his weight will remain high, whatever he may want to, he may do. That also uh, leads to the conclusion that diet and exercise are not effective in losing large amount of weight. They are effective in losing about 5 to 10 percent of weight. And for maintenance, the same diet and exercise have to continue indefinitely if the weight loss has to be maintained. Currently, only bariatric surgery is uh, effective in producing large amount of weight loss and to and and helpful in maintaining that weight loss over prolonged periods of time like 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, the weight loss after bariatric surgery is not immediate. You will not be even a gram lighter when you come out of the operation theatre. You will actually start losing weight gradually over the next one to one and a half to two years. The weight loss speed is uh, higher in the first few months. It slows down and then it plateaus at one and a half to two years. The other thing that you have to remember is that bariatric surgery is an extremely safe and uh, extremely comfortable surgery to undergo. In expert hands. The last thing that you need to remember is the all the diseases that are associated with and related to obesity like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, fatty liver, etc. etc. are all benefited by bariatric surgery and weight loss. Some of them are benefited more, some of them are benefited less, like in, but all patients uh, do derive some amount of benefit uh, in all the conditions. Thank you. Uh, so on behalf of all the viewers, I would like to thank you doctor for coming over here and uh, letting us know some vital facts and letting us know how effective is weight loss surgery and you have answered almost all the questions related to obesity and weight loss. Uh, so I would like to thank you on behalf of all the viewers. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, it was a pleasure being here. <laughs> And all the viewers out there, I would like to tell you, we will be coming up soon in the next episode of Health Vibes. That will be the fifth episode of Health Vibes. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, like and share this post so that we can create awareness about uh, today's topic and reach out to more uh, more crowd. So the next episode topic uh, will be secret and I will be revealing, uh, revealing it in the next episode itself. So stay tuned. Till that, stay fit, stay happy, stay healthy. Thank you. Signing off, Nisha. Thank you.